It ain't the left side or the right side, and it must be the fence side. Welcome to On the Fit Side, recapping the Miami Dolphins-New York Giants game from August 12th. Dolphins were victorious 27-10. First quarter got off to a little bit of a rough start, and then the Dolphins, second and third stringers, really started to come together, bringing out that first win for the Dolphins here in the preseason. Paul and I are going to talk about our 53-man roster as it stands right now. We've done this in previous weeks. We're going to continue to build up here throughout the, the rest of the year, or the rest of the preseason season, excuse me, to make sure that we're having a close eye for you on the Miami Dolphins 53-man roster. So going to the quarterback position, Paul, you had Matt Moore off the roster the last time we did this with Brandon Dowdy as that sole backup quarterback to Ryan Tannehill. Is that still your feeling heading into the second week of preseason? Yeah, I don't think either of these guys did anything to change that fact on Friday night. I think more so they actually went ahead and cemented it. Um, Matt Moore had that dips pass that gave him 51 yards and a touchdown, but he also threw an interception straight into a linebacker's chest. Should have had another one at another point and really just looked bad. So for me, bring on the Brandon Dowdy as the backup to Ryan Tannehill era. Brandon Dowdy definitely had a, an impressive game. Rookie out of Western Kentucky started to show, it really showed some great accuracy throughout the game, especially in his completions uh, to Jakeem Grant as the game progressed. I like Dowdy as the third string, quarter, string quarterback. I, too, am at my wits end with Matt Moore watching him every single freaking last preseason game, but he is guaranteed $1.55 million this year. I do think Matt Moore stays on the team for at least one more year. So Paul has Tannehill and Dowdy making the team. I have Tannehill, Matt Moore, and Brandon Dowdy. Running back position, Foster did not play in this game, is expected to be back next week. Perhaps we see him a little bit in Dallas. Jay Ajayi got the start, had some mixed results. Kenyon Drake's hurt. And, you know, we have an interesting battle for that fourth running back spot between Isaiah Pede, Daniel Thomas, and Damian Williams. That battle's not really between Daniel Thomas and those guys. I, I think it really comes down to Damian Williams. And Isaiah Pete, and I think Isaiah Pete started to show what made him so special coming out of college. I know he's had those issues in the past, uh, kind of washed out with the Rams, but he looked very good. Um, yeah, I like that spin move he pulled ripped off a 22-yarder. Uh, he showed, showed a little shiftiness, showed a little bit of power and a little bit of drive. And I still think Damian Williams, if Ken Drake can get healthy before the season starts, he doesn't add anything special at that point because they overlap so much in terms of what they do. Yeah, Isaiah Pete had a great game here, and, he, and I'll tell you what, and Lisa Johnson was talking about this too when we were tweeting back and forth to each other. Lisa Johnson's from NFL female, and the one thing that she made a great observation on Pete, and I saw it in here, was his ability to press the hole and to step into plan, and I saw great patience and great awareness from Isaiah Pede here uh, at the running back position. If this is a sign for things to come, you know, I'm going to have to really think about adding him as my fourth twenty on the roster. Uh, Damian Williams, you know, had a, had a so-so game and moving forward, unless he really shows that ability to play fullback in a pinch, which he's gotten some looks at from Adam Gaze, or, you know, continue to be that special teams player. But, you know, it, it's really going to be interesting to see if the Dolphins keep a fourth running back and if that's going to be Pete, Daniel Thomas, or Damian Williams. I, I don't see Daniel Thomas being included in that race. Did have 10 carries for 40 yards this past uh, preseason game, but really against four stringers. So, Paul, taking a look at that running back spot, I believe last week you had Isaiah Pede being that fourth running back. Do you still see him being that guy? I do, for all the reasons we just talked about. And I know Damian Williams had a touchdown in there, but really that was almost more of a credit to Laramie Tunsil blowing the defensive end back in and leaving the entire left side of the defense wide open for him to just waltz into the end zone. So I like Damian Williams, but I, I think the writing's on the wall at this point, barring uh, any, any type of injuries. I, I'm with you. I mean, I think Isaiah Pete, if he shows what he did in that game, uh, just the physical ability way, is way more than Damian Williams. And remember, Damian Williams, a former undrafted free agent, Isaiah Pete, a former second-round pick. So there could you can make the case that there is a talent gap between those two. I'm going to change Isaiah Pete to my fourth running back on the 53-man roster, and, and I really hope that he continues to stay on the straight path because he did have some problems with the St. Louis Rams. The uh, wide receiver position, we obviously have Landry, Devontae Parker, Kenny Stills, Leontay Carew, and uh, Joaquin Grant making the team as uh, those top five receivers. Grant only solidified this spot with a great preseason game. Four catches for 68 yards against the Giants, as well as a series of not only long kick returns, but 
making something out of nothing, albeit it was off the hands of A.J. Cruz and went right into the breadbasket of Matt Hazel for a 51-yard touchdown. Are you still staying with Matt Hazel, making this team as the sixth guy? I am. It's, I, I like that heads up play. I've been a fan of Matt Hazel. Uh, I know last year he led uh, all the Dolphins in preseason each and every year thus far, and I do think he's a guy with a lot of promise that can continue to grow this offseason and really be somebody that's not only a six receiver, but actually gets to contribute a little bit this year. I'm going to stick with five receivers. You know, Matt Hazel, if there was a little bit more room on the team or he was a little better at special teams, I might have him as that sixth guy. It was also disappointing with Griff Whalen in this past game. He got a lot of opportunities, never seemed to get open. So it's uh, right now looking like five or six receiver. We'll see if Matt Hazel is that extra guy. Tight end, uh, Jordan Cameron and Deion Sims, obviously, Paul, uh, you would have to think are locks to make the roster. Thomas Warte had a long touchdown reception in this game. Is he sticking as your third tight end, and would you include anybody else in that tight end race? Unfortunately, I wouldn't include anyone else. I'm very underwhelmed with what I've seen of the tight ends thus far. I know Duarte does have good receiving ability, and I like that. Matter of fact, he's the only one of the tight ends that really showed receiving ability in this game. I believe Sam Sims had one catch and a drop, and Jordan Cameron was completely in. So I'm very disappointed in the tight ends. I'm a big fan of tight ends. I grew up watching Pearl Edmonds, you know, all those guys that, that were just special tight ends on this team. I really, really, really need to see something out of this group. Otherwise, I think the Dolphins are going to have to start scouring other teams' cut list or possibly looking to make a trade of some sort. Tight end might be that position where they look on another team's 53-man roster, see who gets cut. Yeah, I'm with you, Paul. I, I think we've been pretty consistent uh, on the tight end position. I also have to remake it at Cameron Sims and, and Duarte. Dominique Jones caught uh, the first first down of the, for the Miami Dolphins in this past game with seven minutes left in the second quarter, and I always thought he had some physical potential, but what's so depressing about these preseason games, too, Dominique Jones then, a couple of drives later, drops one right in his hands. And, you know, when you're the fourth or fifth string tight end and you're really trying to hang on for a roster spot, you can't have those drops. I agree. I think the Dolphins do stick with with three tight ends. Offensive line, um, we can all agree on definitely six. Brandon Albert, Laramie Tunzel, Mike Pouncey, Billy Turner, Juwan James, Jermon Bushrod. After that, things get a little bit hairy between the remaining you would think two to four players um, in terms of back, or actually I'd say two to three players for the Dolphins backups. With the participants being Craig Urbick, the center slash guard acquired in the offseason from Buffalo as a free agent, Jameel Douglas, Anthony Steen, uh, former undrafted free agent out of Alabama, Sam Young, who we had the pleasure of interviewing on the show a little while back, and uh, not sure if there's anybody there I'm forgetting, but if the Dolphins do keep let's say, eight or nine offensive linemen. Paul, after that first wave of six, who do you have making the team still? Right now, I've got eight still on my roster. I do still have Jamil Douglas making it. I know we talked in a previous episode about him and the way he seems to be in the doghouse. I've kind of moved him over to my bubble mate list, which is such that player that's on the bubble and just kind of barely scrapes his way in. I do think Miami needs him to keep him just because of his ability to play back up center in a pinch and with Mike Fancy's injury history. But he may be one of those bottom-of-the-roster guys who gets bumped after uh, other teams make cuts and Miami brings somebody else in. For me, I've got I, – I do still have Dallas Thomas making it. Uh, he, he's got the eye of the coaching staff. Uh, he, he's a good practice player thus far this offseason. It didn't translate on Friday, but he's going to be under that microscope. But I do still have him making it, much to the chagrin of a lot of the Dolphin fans. Much to the chagrin of me, that's for sure. And, you know, the odds are that Dallas Thomas is going to make the final 53-man roster. I hope he doesn't. I hope they come to their senses. And he's going to be making $1.7 million as a backup if Laramie Tunzel beats him for that guard spot. I still have Dallas Thomas being off the roster. Um, The backups that I have making it are Jermon Bushrod, who I thought played very well in this past preseason game, is a professional. Craig Urbick looked the part, too. You know, and again, the word Professional is key in our backups because we're not having to rotate out to a Jason Fox type if we do solid backups at, at the top of the guard spots. I do have Jameel Douglas making it as the eighth lineman by, by default, but he better pick it up. Paul, I also had a lot of defensive linemen 
making the Dolphins' 53-man roster. And, you know, nothing that I saw in this past preseason game really changed anything. Uh, you go down the list, I thought that they impressed in their limited roles. Jordan Phillips did. Andre Branch had a heck of a game. Fide had a couple of losses. McCain was all over the field. Didn't show contain quite very well on, at that defensive end spot, but I think his versatility and now his, his experience in the league gives him a good shot, especially at his salary. Deion Jordan, we should be seeing here in the upcoming weeks. Defensive tackle Chris Jones really did an effective job, number 52 in the middle. Another guy, too, that you talked about last week and you had on your final 53-man roster was uh, DeAndre Coleman. Do you still have DeAndre Coleman on your final 53? Actually, I've replaced Coleman with Chris Jones. But one other change that I had to that, even though DeAndre Coleman did look good in this game, one other change I had was I I removed Jason Jones and and put Chris McCain in there. Uh, I know I had him not making the roster. He's been one of those guys the darling of fans because he's so interactive. His name gets out there. He's very good with the media, but that has not translated on the field, but he's starting to show that a little more this season on the field. And that's what matters in terms of making a roster. So I, I've, I've swapped McCain in for, for Jason Jones and I've swapped Chris Jones in for uh, DeAndre Coleman. That's a great point because this could not have been a good, a good game here for Jason Jones. Uh, Jordan Phillips, Branch, Fide, McCain, Jordan, and Chris Jones, and DeAndre Coleman, I thought all played well in reserve. And you know that the benefit of the doubt is very likely going to go to one of those younger players during crunch time. So I still have Jason Jones making the roster, but really hanging on at this point because I I, I would much prefer the younger Terrence Fide, Andre Branch types to make this roster. So uh, I'm going to stick with 11 defensive linemen down the list. Wake, Sue, Mitchell, Mario Williams, Jason Jones, Phillips, Branch, Fade, Jordan, McCain, and Chris Jones. At the linebacker spot, you know, very interesting because Kiko Alonso in this game, to me, epitomized what we're probably going to see out of him this year. He looked very good in pass coverage, looked like he was going sideline to sideline. Against Larry Donnell, I saw him cover him very, very well twice. Uh, was active, was quick, but then on Rashad Jennings' four-yard run, and um, Alonzo whiffed on the tackle. Yeah, and we're, we're going to see that on occasion. One of the things we see a lot with a lot of the players that play very fast is not only do they occasionally miss a few extra tackles, but it looks a hell of a lot worse when they do because they go flying when they, when they miss those tackles. So I expect to see that, but I expect the special plays that we'll see out of Kiko to kind of counteract those those, those negatives. Yeah, you really take the good and the bad with uh, with Kiko Alonso and Jelani Jenkins. Looking at them in pass defense, you can make the case that these two uh, form a phenomenal a, a phenomenal duo in, in, in pass defense because they can cover people all over the field, but you're going to have to sacrifice something against the run when that happens. So you know, uh, but overall, I thought Kiko looked better than he did worse in that game. I, obviously, he's our starting middle linebacker. Misi and Jenkins both make the team at outside linebacker. Neville Hewitt's in. I thought he played a pretty good game, too. And also, Zach Vigil, the middle linebacker, assuming that he comes back and he comes back healthy. I still have five linebackers making the team because I think there's a, in a pinch, Chris McCain and or Deion Jordan can move over to the linebacker in that game-to-game situation. Paul, you had James Michael Johnson as your sixth linebacker making the roster last week, and he actually had a pretty good game. Looked looked apart, looked like he was flying all over the field. Do you still have him staying as your sixth linebacker on this 53? Well, I, I did have James Michael Johnson, and, and I agree with you. He did look good in this game. But there was a fan favorite in this game, I think, makes his team over James Michael Johnson, primarily based on the work he did in special teams, if he can keep it up. And, and that was Mike Hall, which I know a lot of fans are going to be happy if Hall makes the roster. They look at him as more of the second coming of Zach Thomas. Really, he's more the second coming of maybe Larry Izzo. But I'm, I'm good with that. Larry Izzo was a pretty damn good special teamer. And Hull could be that key cog that I see the Spencer Paysinger, who does okay at linebacker, is pretty good at special teams. Nothing special to write home about. And the way Hull was flying up and down that field on special teams, I think really cemented his chances of being able to make that roster as well. And Mike Hull forced a fumble against the Giants in the first quarter that really could have d- turned the tables in that game early. If you know, if it's a game that you're paying attention to and you know, it doesn't surprise people. He has a nose for the ball. He overcame a lot of odds making the dolphins practice squad and their 53 man roster. 
that will be one of the more interesting underrated battles of camp as it, as it goes down is if the Dolphins are keeping a sixth linebacker, is it Mike Hall? Is it James Michael Johnson? Is it somebody else? I'm going to stick with five linebackers at this time, but it wouldn't surprise me if, if Hall made it as the sixth guy. Uh, cornerback position, you know, uh, Chris Culliver, Xavier Howard, it's going to depend whether or not they're going to be on the 53-man roster or the PUP list heading into the season. I expect them both to be ready for the beginning of the season. And if that's the case, I still do have the top six guys, Maxwell, Culliver, Lippitt, McCain, Xavier Howard, and sixth-round pick Jordan Lucas. Paul, does your cornerback depth chart look the same, or do you have somebody different on there? Uh, it's slightly different. Uh, I, I actually expect that one of the two of those guys is probably going to start the season on the PUP list between Culver and Howard. Um, my my guess would be Culver, in which case you'd see Jordan Lucas on that roster. But I've, I've got them keeping Ken be check with this. You know, again, special teams is where those bottom of the roster guys really make their money. And I think Chekwa can play corner in a pinch, but also go out and make a difference on special teams. So I, I've got Chekwa in there over Jordan Lucas. But I have Lucas going to the practice squad if and when uh, Culver or Howard, whoever ends up on PUP, is back healthy. It really will be experience against potential there. Jordan Lucas, a, a player the Dolphins drafted in the sixth round, thought enough of him to do that. Physically, he looks like he can get the job done. But Chekwa also with the Raiders has, you know, brings five years of uh, at least special teams experience to the table. That'll be an interesting battle, too. The safety position, Paul Rashad Jones, IAQ, Michael Thomas, Walt Aiken, Shamil Gary. We had as our as our five guys. Are we sticking with that, too? For me, for right now, I am. Uh, Jameel Gary, I hope he gets to show a little bit more of what he showed in limited action last year. Walt Akins, I had him in the previous episode as one of my guys to keep an eye on that I thought did really well in this, in this past game, and I'm hoping the same build off of that. Michael Thomas, we'll see. I, I hope so. Uh, he's a good guy. A lot of high expectations for last year, but last year was such a big disappointment. I hope to see him make the roster. We'll see if he does. And Michael Thomas, if you look back at uh, Sterling Shepard's catch along the sideline in the first quarter, looks like Michael Thomas gave up on that play a little bit. So, yeah, it will be interesting to see. Good special teamer, but if he can find a role on the regular defense on an ongoing basis, it's going to be that question. I also have all five safeties making the roster. Shamil Gary is a guy that you know I think you and I are in, ag- are in agreement with, is a little bit underrated on this team right now. Oh, it doesn't really stick out or flash in a specific area. Always oh, seems to be in the right place at least from or when he's gotten the opportunity. Special teams, I'm sure we can agree. Matt Dar, Andrew Franks, John Denny. I would imagine you don't see that changing either. Yep. All right, moving along. So, you know, putting a big bow on this Dolphins-Giants game, it was nice to see some of these players moving down the depth chart where, you know, the, the kind of who's this guy from last year. I thought Walt A. Neville Hewitt, Shamil Gary, a lot of these different players, Paul, you know, five or six players we can take a look at and say, you know, it looks like that they are more acting like they belong this year. Yeah, and, and not only the five or six that look like they belong even more, and I'll, I'll throw Jordan Phillips onto that pile as well, and Mike Hall, actually, who we just talked about, but also some of the young guys already making an impact, something that we probably may not have seen all throughout their first season under the previous regime, let alone this early in a preseason game, getting to really see an impact from these guys. Guys like Jakeem Grant, guys like Brandon Dowdy, guys like Laramie Tunson. So that's an exciting thing as well, and another building block to look at from this Giants game. Speaking of uh, preseason games, The Miami Dolphins are going to score off on Friday against the Dallas Cowboys. Big test for the defensive line. And when Vance Joseph was asked if he was going to, quote, release the hounds for this Cowboys game, he said, do you mean am I going to play the defensive lineman? And the reporter said yes. And he said yes, they're probably going to play a series or two. So more than likely, Cameron Wake, Mary Williams, and Dominic can see. We're going to be able to see them bright and early. Big, big test for the Dolphins' defensive line here again is the Cowboys' offensive line that might be the best in the league, ball. Completely agree. Yeah, and looking at, at this matchup, yeah, we've we got the, got the whistle a little bit last week against the Dallas Cowboys, what we can 
Paul, looking at the rest of the Dolphins Cowboys matchups here, you know, we, we identified a few specific players last week that we were looking to step up. Some did, some didn't. Who are three players that you're really looking to step up in this Dallas Cowboys game and make that final 53 man roster? Uh, one of the guys I'm looking at here is, I know we've talked a little bit about it, but I'm going to be keeping an even closer eye on Brandon Dowdy in this game because if he can build off of last week's performance and this week's build off again throughout the preseason, I think that may be the scenario where we finally have a younger successor that can serve as Tannehill's backup and that maybe we don't feel as uncomfortable, some of us, if Tannehill were to go down and Dowdy had to fill his shoes for a series or a game or two. So that's somebody I'm looking to see step up. I'm looking to see Larry Tunzel get a little more playing time and really try to see the reins and, and take over that left guard position going into that third preseason game. I think that is going to be critical for whether or not he starts the year at left guard. If they don't put him in the left guard for the third preseason game, which I know we're talking about the second year, and they're making him earn it, I don't see a logical way that they can say, you know what? We played Dallas Thomas all preseason. Laramie, here you go. So he needs to build off of that and give the coaches even more of an excuse to say, yep, Dallas does well, but we're putting it in comes uh, The third guy I'm looking to see step up here is Leonte for him, just because I had so many expectations for him going to that Giants game and, and really expected him as somebody I had as a lock for my roster. Uh, and I think everybody does at this point. He will be making a 53, barring something completely unforeseen. But I'm looking to see him step up this week. Three good ones, Brandon Dowdy, Laramie Tunzel, and Leonte Carew. I'm going to look to see a few players take an additional step up, just like you are, Paul. I'll go in a different direction. Uh, Andre Branch, again, I've heard really good reports coming out of camp. I, I thought that he could be a potential steal for the Dolphins. Former second-round pick out of Clemson, signed for one year, $2 million on a prove-it contract. Looked big, looked strong. And uh, given that Cameron Wake is not going to be playing 50 or 60 snaps at 35 years old, uh, I, I'm looking for Branch to step up and really be that guy. The other one is Terrence Fiday. We're starting to look the part every August, but then we get into the regular season, and he doesn't really get either get that opportunity or showcase that opportunity. Also, the third guy who caught my attention a little bit was Anthony Steen, the center, former undrafted free agent out of Alabama. Started to see the field, started to look the part a little bit, and he could be in a battle with Jamil Douglas for that, that third offensive lineman spot. Paul, I know that as we've been talking about this, you've been thinking about one another player too. Yeah, I was thinking about it really during my second, but I was like, ah, I'm sure Cal will mention it. And it, it's not even an individual player, unfortunately. I'm looking for Jordan Cameron, Deion Sims, Thomas Duarte. Would at least two of you please step the hell up in this game? Because it's been an underwhelming year for two of these guys um, over the past year, including last season. And it's been an underwhelming preseason, both in practice and in the first preseason game. Somebody needs to start getting it and really seize that role, especially given the fact that Jordan Cameron supposedly really wants to be here and is excited for the opportunity, took the pay cut to be here and everything, and really hasn't shown that he even justifies what they're paying him in that contract at this point. Well, given that the Dolphins kept Jordan Cameron around at his salary and refused to give Lamar Miller another million or two million dollars he better darn well produce this year at that tight end spot a couple other names that i'll throw out there too isaiah pede and james michael johnson i'm looking forward to watching play in this preseason game too looked the part started to look very good last uh, last week and at least as former second and fifth round picks in the nfl we know physically that they have the ability to get the job done so as we get closer and closer to the start of the regular season, Paul and I will be here breaking down the 53-man roster, and we'll start having guests in the upcoming week as well. And also, be sure to follow us on the Fin side, both on Facebook and on Twitter. If you have a question for us, you can either put it in Facebook or put it in Twitter with the hashtag OTFS if you have a question. We'll be sure to read it on the air and be sure to talk about that as well. Paul, uh, thanks for joining us here tonight as we get further and further into the offseason. So, Loki, take us home. It ain't the left side or the right side, then it must be the fin side. It ain't the left side, left side or the right, right side, side, and it must be uh, the fifth look. Listen, Dolphins fans across the land all tuning in To see what Brian, Cat, and Paul about to do again We rep our team, you can't change, stop a ruin it All we need is to figure what 
to do to win. Fins radio, live and direct. Win or lose, we're showing up for every contest. No puppet talk, it's all raw and unfiltered. Voice of the fans when the season looks peculiar. Rock a apple orange over here, and you familiar. Every week they coming through our speakers to fulfill the crepe we have to hear about our team and all the latest news. Vets, the rookies trying to make the team paying dues. Current players and alumni interviews. City to city, state to state, follow the moves. Call the hotline, Dolphins talk, set to go. Best sports team and show all across the globe. Fin. It ain't the left side or the right side.